In this video, we're going to discuss common resources in economics. So a common resource is a resource that has two characteristics. First, it's non-excludable, and second, it's rivalrous. And I want to give you an example to explain what those terms mean. So let's take the ocean. It's very difficult to exclude people from being able to use the ocean. So if you're a country and you say, hey, we think that there's a problem with overfishing, it might be difficult to prevent people from going into the ocean and fishing. So that's what we mean by non-excludable. Rivalrous means that basically if somebody goes out and catches a fish out of the ocean, that's one less fish that somebody else could catch. So there's not just some unlimited number of fish in the ocean. There's a finite number of fish. And if I catch a fish, that's one less fish that you or somebody else could catch. So I want to talk about this in the context of, of lobsters. Let's take lobstering and let's think about the ocean and let's think about lobstering. The more boats you have, let, let's say you, you want to catch lobsters for a living. The more boats you have, the more lobsters you're going to be able to catch, right? So the number of fish you catch per boat is going to decrease as the number of boats increase. But even so, you would be an advantage. You would continue to get more and more boats. You could catch more and more lobsters, right? And you're going to continue to increase the number of boats that, that you have until you reach the point where the return for, per boat is equal to your marginal cost, right? So when you think of that as your marginal private benefit, is going to be equal to the marginal cost. That's the decision rule you're going to follow. And so, but think about it. When you add more boats, when you increase the number of boats, you're reducing the catch of other boats, right? So there are other people out trying to catch lobsters. And so each additional boat that you put out in the ocean is going to decrease the amount of lobsters that are available to the other boats. And so adding another boat is imposing a cost on these on these other fishermen and so it's it's actually it's a negative externality so i want to just kind of graph this out and show you the nature of the externality so let's say that we've got price up here and you can think of this as the the, the number of fish caught or the value of the fish caught or so forth and then we'll have quantity with quantity we'll have the, this is the number of boats this is the number of boats to go out and catch lobsters and so I wanted to show you the return to this and how the marginal private benefit differs from the social benefit. So let's take, let's say that the marginal private benefit, or let, first let's do the marginal cost. Let's just say the marginal cost, here's the, the cost of, of a boat, cost of a boat. And so let's say that the return, the average return to having a boat, let's say that it's, it's downward sloping like that. So we can think of this as the marginal private benefit. And the reason I keep calling it private benefit is different from the social benefit. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. But this is, this is the average return per boat or of having a boat. Okay. So that's what this curve is here. And now what, we're, what I want to show you is here's why we have an externality. Because the marginal social benefit let's say that this is the marginal social benefit. I'll put it MSB. It's the marginal social benefit. And the social benefit is the benefit when we think about society in general. This private benefit, let's say you have a lobstering company, you're just considering the benefit, the payoff, the return per boat, when you're deciding, oh, do I get another boat? Do I not get another boat? You're only looking at your return. How many more fish will I catch if I get this extra boat? And then you're comparing that to the, uh, the marginal cost of a boat, right? So where we're going to end up in, in a free market is we're going to end up here. This is going to be our equilibrium number of boats. So this is the equilibrium number of boats that, that we're going to have. And, and let's just say it was, let's say it was a thousand or something, right? So there's a thousand lobster boats. Now, from a, from society's perspective, the socially efficient or optimal number of boats is going to be less. It's going to, it's going to be a lower number, right? So th this is the efficient amount. So the market, the free market is not going to produce the efficient number of boats. And the reason is, is that there's a difference here between these two curves. See this? So you're just saying with your company, you're saying, hey, look, I'm just looking at 
I'm going to stop buying boats. I'm going to stop putting boats out there when I get to the point where the cost of doing so is equal to the benefit, right? Because you're not going to continue to put get, get boats if the benefit is lower than the incremental cost, right? So you're going to do so until your benefit is equal to the cost. But that point, that equilibrium that is produced by the free market is actually higher than the socially efficient quantity, this Q star, right? So it's actually, from a social perspective, weighing all the costs and benefits to all the people in your country, or what, it, it would actually be best if there were just 600 boats. And the reason that the socially efficient number is, is lower than the, what the free market produces is because these people, so, so when you are making your decision and saying, hey, I'm gonna keep producing boats or getting boats out there until my benefit, uh, the incremental benefit equ equals the incremental cost, is because you're not considering cost to other lobstermen. You're not considering, hey, what about these other lobsters? By me getting another boat out there, I'm just catching some fish or some lobsters that would have been caught by other lobster boats anyways, by these other firms. You don't care about that because you're thinking, hey, I just am thinking about my own return per boat, right? You're just looking for your own self-interest and that's fine, but we need to understand that there's a problem here because we're actually, this common resource, it's basically now there's an incentive to overuse it. There's an incentive to overuse it because people are just trying to put more and more boats out there. And, and we see that it's being, in this example, there's 400 additional boats, the 1,000 minus 600. We got, we got almost double the number of boats out there that, that we should have from a socially efficient perspective. And so that could lead to overfishing. It could deplete the lobster supply. And we've seen this happen in, in the real world where you see fish stocks or, or lobsters are, are depleted. And it's be, it be basically because of the situation. You have a common resource where it's difficult to restrict people from going into the ocean, and, and, and but by the same token, they're creating costs when they do so, right? If they go out, they're getting an incremental benefit maybe from having an extra boat, but they're imposing costs on some of the other people with boats as well. And so they're gonna, we're gonna overproduce. We have too many boats. The quantity is, is too high, and so, Basically, there's there's a number of ways you could deal with this. One way that is proposed, and some people don't like this, but is privatization. So if you privatize the common resource, then the owner of the resource, so this is where people say like, oh, well, if, if we have a lake or something, if you have a private owner instead of it being like government land or whatever, or government lake or something, then the private owner has an incentive to, to basically, uh, they'll find a way to restrict access and, and make sure that there's not overfishing or whatever. And another way is, is some people have issued licenses for lobstering or for things like that. And then now people have an incentive because the license has value in and of itself. They don't want to completely deplete the fish stock or the lobster stock. And we'll, we'll talk about these methods in the videos to come, but I just want to give you a, a quick introduction to the idea of common resources and how they lead to overuse and how the free market will end up with just basically the, the resource being depleted.